Happy New Year everyone, Dan here and welcome again to that paintball channel. Today I have for you the first in a multi-part comprehensive series on a topic that I've been wanting to cover for a long time and that is paintball accuracy without question. The longest running, most hotly debated, most divisive issue in paintball ever. I wanted to cover this not only because of my own issues and struggles with this in my time as a player, but also and especially because of the way that I see it affecting our community. You've got younger players who wouldn't expect to know any better. You've got older, more experienced players that you would think would know better. And across the board, what I see are players just getting pulled into this stream of nonsense and superstition and junk science that has been flowing through the history of our sport since the very beginning, frankly. And for that reason alone, you know, it's frustrating, it's upsetting in many ways, precisely because it's not just a case of misinformation. People are spending real time they're spending real money on this issue. It's an important issue. And we're part of a community. And if in some way this channel can help to save people time, save people frustration, money, heartache, then I have an obligation to, to help out, even if, if it's just a little piece of information that can help. So that's one thing. Another issue is to try to, to really pull all of the separate issues that come to play in this and get them together. You know, one of the nice things at least about this issue is that there are a lot of smart people who over the years have done a lot of good work and compiled a lot of good data on this. But unfortunately, they're all sort of broken up into pieces that are scattered to the four corners. And you can find them but a lot of times it's it's a lot of work and in many cases you know one person will be doing research in this area another person will be do, doing research in that area and sometimes those areas overlap sometimes they don't and i think also what part of what's adding to the confusion on this is that sometimes people will see some person's research here and then they'll look at another piece of research there and it will seem either because they're not really dealing with the same angle but sometimes the conclusions will appear to be very different. And so people can look at that and maybe get a little bit frustrated. And, you know, they might walk away from that thinking, well, you know, this person is kind of contradicting this other person and, you know, throwing their hands up and saying, well, maybe there's just no real right or wrong answer. So that was another issue in putting this series together. I wanted to get all the pieces together and get them all on the table at the same time into one cohesive unit so that it could make sense. Now, that's definitely a tall order. And as I said, th this is a big project and it's going to take several episodes in order to, to unpack this. But I do want to unpack this fully. So to sort of set the stage for where we're going to go, paintball accuracy breaks down into four essential components. You have to have all four of them. Uh, without all four, you're not dealing with the whole picture. First, there's the issue of the player. Second, you have the issue of equipment, which breaks down to the marker, the regulator, paint, and barrel. And as you may well imagine, we're going to be spending a lot of time on uh, paint and barrel. Then we have the issue of environment. Uh, not a lot of time has been spent talking about this, but it's one of the more important issues. Finally, there's the issue of the basic hard physics of paintball. And, you know, as we go back through these, we will see that you can make some modifications to the first two. You can make some upgrades to equipment. You can make some upgrades to skill sets. And you can actually get some very beneficial results from that. In the same way, you can make some uh, changes to environment in some cases, you can make accommodations, and that can provide a lot of beneficial results. But in the case of the hard physics of paintball, that's something that you can't change. That is set in stone, fixed. It's part of the fabric of the universe. So part of what the issue is, I think, in many ways, is that people are looking at 
maybe one angle or a couple of angles, one issue, another issue, and they're not putting them all together. And in some cases, there's a misunderstanding with respect to what things can be changed, what things can be improved upon, and what things are, can't. And we just have to realize, okay, this is, this is a hard wall. We can't go through that way. We need to think of another way around. So that's going to be part of what this series is doing. Bringing these pieces together, making sense of the whole package, and then figuring out ways that we can make changes, modifications that will allow us to actually get good results. Now, as I said, th this is a big bite to try to take, but I think that it's worth it. And at the same time, even though we're going to be unpacking a lot of this stuff, and, you know, we won't necessarily be going in the order that I've laid them out. Uh, we will be dealing with all of them, and we will be unpacking them all to uh, a great depth. And something else that, that comes into play here, you know, a lot of these people who have done research, so many smart people doing such good research, but in many cases, these individuals are specialists, and they're talking to other specialists. And so they're using, in many cases, a lot of technical language. They're bringing, you know, mountains of information to the table. And I think a lot of times regular players who maybe don't have a background in science or physics, they, they are trying to get educated, but they come to these resources and they see it and they just become overwhelmed by the technicality of the language and the sheer volume of information. And so in some cases they may draw back. And that, that, is, that hurts. Uh, it hurts the cause of making this sport better because people see that, they, they want to go through, but they shrink away because uh, the language is too off-putting. So part of what I'm going to do in this series is, without dumbing it down, present the information in just common everyday language uh, so that as many people as possible can get on board, make sense of it, and then to that extent, actually sit at the table and, and be able to make contributions of their own. That's the whole point of this. Um, and I think if we can just get it all together, have it all on the table at the same time with everybody looking at it, that can really begin to get a new kind of conversation going, where all the pieces are understood, not simply together, but in the way that they relate to one another. So. I am very much looking forward to this. I hope that uh, you are as well. I hope this is uh, going to be something that you can learn from and as well share in. And uh, by all means, come on back for the next episode and bring a friend.